in this video, after finishing up my two week rapid fat loss mini cut, it was now time for the two week post diet period. What I'm gonna do is recap what happened with the participants, what I chose to do, the results from my methods, and some other considerations you should make. Okay, real quick before we get started, if you haven't seen the rest of the videos from this series, this video is gonna make absolutely no sense. So I would pause this video, there's a link to the playlist in the description, go back, watch the previous videos, and then come back to finish up this series. Anyway, as a quick recap, remember after they did the two week diet period, the participants were told, hey, do whatever you want for the next two weeks. And on average, they reduced their calories about 11% from their pre-diet break numbers. But remember, this is up significantly from the 37 and a half calorie deficit they were in for the two week diet period. And remember, even though they lost some fat free mass during the diet period, it all came back to baseline in the post diet period. And the resting energy expenditure, while it dropped about 5.2% during the diet period, was still down post diet, but only by 2.8%. Now, as far as what I decided to do, if you remember before, my pre-diet break maintenance calories was 2850. I went through the two-week diet period and told you I was going to take three days of consecutive refeeds doing 2,650 calories, which is about a 7% decrease for my pre-diet maintenance. And then I was going to determine after those three days, what do I want to do from there? And you know what? I kind of had to fight myself here. I really, truly wanted to go back into a deficit, lose some of this extra weight I put on over the previous handful of months and try to get back down leaner. But I decided you know what that is the wrong decision first it was my fault and I think it's important to kind of live with that and accept it not try to rush and undo what's happened this is the thing that keeps so many people stuck in their metabolism is trash because you're constantly trying to take off what you gained and it's this, this impossible loop plus that goes against what I want to accomplish here in the long run and that is take my time add some additional muscle put myself into a good position so next year I can do a big cut and what not many people understand is this what you do when you're not dieting that really makes the big Big changes in your body and I know it's gonna be better for my long-term goals to get out of the deficit take plenty of time and quite frankly there's a lot of value in learning to be comfortable being a bit uncomfortable and to get your best possible physique you almost for sure are gonna to have to get to higher levels of body fat than you want in the short term to set yourself up for the future success you're after so with that I decided for the rest of that first week I was just gonna stay on the 2650 calories and then reverse diet from there and I did want to kind of talk about some of the strategies I took, some of the differences between when I was dieting and now that my calories are higher. And the first big change was I went away from the more strict macro approach where you're tracking carbs, protein, and fat and went back to my more flexible approach that I like where I just track calories and protein and interchange carbs and fats. And while during the actual diet phase, I wasn't really putting my numbers into a spreadsheet to look at how the week looked because normally what I would do and that's what I did this week is have about a 30 to 50 calorie range that you average for the week and you can go up and down however you want each day, just get that average to work out but there's so much value in not getting caught up and trying to be perfect every single day and what usually happens when you do that is you get so caught up in it as soon as you make any kind of mistake and get off plan you feel like you screwed everything up and it can turn into this all or nothing binging kind of mentality that's just a disaster so while this strategy allows for a lot more flexibility a lot more freedom in your diet it's pretty tough to do if you aren't tracking it in some sort of a spreadsheet because otherwise you're just kind of going up and down but you don't really know where your week's at so what I started doing here and this is actually something I had gotten away from even before the diet started and it kind of helped me remember just how valuable this strategy is I started using my spreadsheet again and then I plugged in my numbers every single day and when you do this you can see okay my calories are a little high my calories are a little low and then by the time you get to the end of the week when there's a couple days left you can make some pretty easy adjustments and just get things to work out a little bit better and it makes it much simpler too if you're not that great with math and you just go to the last couple of days and you're a little bit high you can just say okay let me play around with some numbers plug in some calories here and just see what happens when I do that and then you can kind of see okay here's what I need to hit to get things where they need to be. And that's why you want to do this every day and not wait till the end of the week to plug it all in because then it's all done. And many people are oftentimes surprised. Oh, I thought I was really close. They plug the numbers in and go, I was way off. So this is a spreadsheet I use with my clients. They can vary a little bit depending on their goals and what strategies they're using. But I've had a few people reach out recently asking if I sold this spreadsheet because they aren't very good with spreadsheets and they'd like to have something to put their data in for themselves. So what I've been doing, if you're interested, I just sell it for $30. Just pretty simple stuff. I don't have it on my website or anything. So if this something you're interested in I'm happy to do it for you just shoot me an email at colin at colindawaytraining.com just say hey I'm interested in the spreadsheet and I can send you over an invoice but I'll not only send the spreadsheet but I'll send a video that kind of explain how it works some of the different options you have and there'll be three different tabs as well one for if you like a more straight up day approach where you have the same calorie target every day one where you have a six low day and one high day strategy and one for a five low day two high day refeed strategy and you can make changes to this based on whether you want calories
calories and protein or all three macros where your calories add up automatically. But thankfully, and that's kind of brings me right into the results. First of all, the hunger was much better. And this was a big concern for me. I wasn't quite sure with just two weeks if it was going to linger for a while. Pretty quickly, the first two or three days on the higher calories, my hunger subsided substantially. Now, I'm not saying there was no hunger, but it was very manageable and was not a big concern for me. But as far as the results, when it comes to weight, going by the averages week by week, my weight actually stayed pretty similar to the week prior, up about a third of a pound. And remember in the last video, I talked about how in a, such an extreme deficit, it can maybe make a little bit more sense to look at those daily numbers a little bit more closely, something I don't normally recommend. But now with calories coming up and things being more consistent, for sure, we want to look at weekly averages. So yes, you can make some arguments if you take those last couple days that I was looking at and comparing that last week, weight is certainly up more. But if you go based on what the participants saw, we already know, and this is very logical, but that increase in weight after the diet's done is basically all water weight, glycogen and water returning into your muscles. And it's not body fat. You got to get away from getting freaked out about weight going up or down on any given day. There's too many reasons. And that also was displayed in my measurements. You can see the end of the two week diet and the first week with higher calories, my waist measurement stayed exactly the same. And that brings me to my second week post diet. And I decided to increase my calories by 50 here, basically starting that reverse diet process. And I didn't make a big jump because one, I want to kind of stay a little bit steady for a little bit and hunger wasn't too bad. So I didn't feel like I needed a big jump. I also at this time reduced my protein a little bit. I took it down to 170 grams per day. And quite frankly, I'm not worried too much about it, whether it's 170, 180, 160. This is plenty of protein to maximize anabolism and everything. Now, as far as weight, first, I want to talk about how this week there were some pretty big spikes up and down. So again, I really want to reiterate, you can't get caught up in these weight spikes. They're going to happen. I don't care if you're cutting, building, maintaining, you're going to see fluctuations on a daily basis. This is why the average is so much better. But anyways, if you look at the average weight for this week, it was actually down 0.44 pounds from the previous week and even technically slightly less from the average week from the last week of the two week diet. And this is all very much normal. Even if you're at true maintenance, your weight is going to spike up and down on different weeks. So the weekly average is a much better, more accurate tool, but there's still fluctuations in that. Like if I'm truly in a maintenance phase, I can see one week, maybe I'll be 179. The next week I'll be 180 and then I'll be 178 and 79 and 78 and 79 and 80 and 79 right? Like it jumps all around. So there's always going to be fluctuations. You can't get too mentally tied up into even those, but regardless of weight, much like before waist measurements were exactly the same. So that's three weeks in a row of the exact same. So I think it's pretty safe to say maintaining pretty well at this point. So if you look at the weight from the, before the diet started, and now I think you can pretty safely say I saw a three and a half ish pound drop. That's probably all from fat. But to reiterate my point from last week, these aren't going to be huge noticeable changes. Remember, this is just to kind of drop a little bit before a long build just to get a little bit more comfortable. If you look at my pictures from the first week to after the two week diet period to after the four weeks when I replenish again, there is not a whole lot of change here and nor did I expect there to be, but I am happy to be in a bit better position here and ready to take on my next phase. Now, before I get into that though, I did want to make one more quick note about the calorie changes on a day by day basis within your week. If you look at this second week, there was a lot more fluctuations. Now I'm being more flexible. I'm starting to go out to eat more and having more on the weekend and everything. So I have some higher calorie days. I have some lower calorie days. And this is where that spreadsheet really shines too. I like to have my end of my week actually be in the middle of an actual week because it makes it easier to adjust if you're a little bit high versus having your last two days be like a Saturday or Sunday where you're usually more flexible. It's hard to do that. So that brings me to, okay, maybe there is something to this method. Now, last week I said I probably wouldn't do it again, but now that I've gone through the full four weeks and I know that the hunger subsided significantly, there's a little bit more value to this. And I can see maybe you just get really aggressive for two weeks, knock it out and be done with it. A comment that somebody else left on my previous video I thought was pretty clever. One thing you could maybe do is take the first few days and taper them down so it's not such a huge shock to the body. So for instance, instead of going from 28, 50 calories right down to 1780, maybe if I did like the first day a more normal decrease and go to like maybe 2200 calories, then the next day 2000 calories, and then the next day down to the 1780, perhaps that wouldn't be quite such a shock and that could help with hunger. And then do seven days from there, and then still I think do a two day refeed in the middle, and then another seven days, just kind of thinking out loud. These are all just ideas to play around with, but I can see how it might make some sense. So where I'm going from here, well, first of all, for this next week, I guess you could call it week five, I did make another 50 calorie increase. So now I'm up to 2750 calories. And in all likelihood, I'm just going to keep making these bumps for a while until it puts me into a very, very small surplus just to help me optimally build for the rest of the year. And then we'll ride it out from there. The plan is to do another video to wrap up this series in roughly a month. I don't have a hard
hard set date, but somewhere around there, just to kind of give you an idea of how things have gone since then and, and where I'm at. I do have one challenge coming up here that I'll certainly talk about in the next video, but I am going to be going to Disney for a long weekend because when I do these trips, I don't worry about it. I have fun. I'm going to have more than usual. I'm probably going to gain a little bit of weight and I'm just okay with it. And I think that's an important thing to do. There's no right or wrong answer, but if you want to go have fun, you have to be okay with what that means. Just like if you want to stick to your plan, you have to be okay with what that means. There's pros and cons in your approach. You just have to be okay with that. For me, I'm okay if I might gain maybe a pound or so of body fat because I want to go have fun. We're going to go to Gideon's that has just these ridiculous cookies. And I just saw that they're going to have like a chocolate peanut butter swirl, which I am a chocolate peanut butter fiend. Anything chocolate peanut butter is my jam. So I can't wait to have that. We have brunch at Chef Arts where I've been wanting to have this big brunch sandwich thing that they have. And there's gonna be plenty of eating and drinking. We're gonna be going around the world at Epcot. And there's gonna be all the things. Now I do get a ton of steps from this. So that definitely helps offset that. A lot of times I get 20, sometimes even 30,000 steps while we're there. But I wanted to mention it because I think it's important to see that yes, you can still go out and have fun. You don't have to be super strict and you can keep things in check. The problem is what most people do is they feel bad about it, beat themselves up and feel guilty, and then let those two or three days turn into two or three weeks or months because they can't get back on track. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll talk more about that in the next video. But other than that, there are some other considerations you can make with your reverse diet in terms of how you choose to increase your calories. So if you wanna know all the different ways you can increase your calories during a reverse, then make sure you check out this top video next. And other than that, I'll see you in about a month.